Cool. All right, so we'll be going through a little bit of this, and just to kind of explain with the book, some of what we do tonight will be with this, and then a lot of it, if you read the book, it's extra, so I don't just teach straight through the chapter or whatever. I'll touch on some things, and there's some things in here that are extra as well, so we'll be doing that in just a minute, and I think everything is set. Awesome. Well, cool. Let me pray for us and we'll get started. God, thank you for tonight. We pray you'll teach us and challenge us as we're learning about uh, just the power of habits and how we can do big things through little ones. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, I don't know if any of you... Oh, oh. Let me, let me rewind for a minute. Okay. So, if you want, uh, I mention this every week, but you're allowed to be on your phone in church because it's cool like that. If you get a newbrick.church in your browser, let's see, then you get a page that looks like this. And if you click on that first thing that says Habit Power, it will take you to the message and you can follow along. It's got some different resources and stuff in there as well. You can share, you can look along, read and all that. So that will be there. We got announcements on the bottom. <laughs> on that page. So everything we do is centered around this. So you can go to that newberg.church, click on Habit Power, and it takes you to the notes. And we also, if um, it helps anybody, we have the ability to translate into Spanish there. So that's pretty cool. Cool. So we'll be going through that, and y'all are free to do that. <clears throat> okay, I think that was everything. All right. Well, we are uh, technically in our second week. This is our first big week in our new series called Habit Power. And we're looking at this idea of how we can do uh, those big changes that can happen through little ones. And uh, what we looked at last week is this idea that we really, truly can change. And we looked at the disciples and how before Jesus died and, and came back to life, that they were scared, they ran away. Um, but afterwards, they experienced transformation. And they were willing to go out in the city and tell everybody about Jesus. And there was this verse that was really awesome where uh, the, the people that were in the court saw that Peter and John had been with Jesus. And they said that they could see they were normal, ordinary guys, but they had been with Jesus. And so they had changed because of that. Uh, there's a really cool story, um, another Bible character in the book that you can read about, a guy that led a crazy life, did things that none of us have done. I'm confident because we would be in jail for life if we had done them. And so, but God had changed his heart too, so you can read through that. Um, in this next week, we're going to be looking at the first step in starting a new habit. And what I'm hoping will happen is over the course of this series that each of us will pick a habit that we say, you know, this is um, what I feel like for this next several weeks I'm going to accomplish. And I encourage you this week to start praying. And we're going to look um, today, the first week, at how to kind of pick a habit. And we're going to look more next week in that too. But over these couple of weeks to pick a habit um, that we're going to be walking through together and so you can start thinking about that and praying about that. Um, but today we're going to look at one certain way to go about picking a habit to do. Now, how many of you um, have ever experienced this phenomenon before like I have? It could be a closet, it could be your garage, it could be some other place that you store things. That if empty space exists, it tends to get filled up. Once it's full, nothing else goes in it because it's impossible. But if there's empty space, stuff manages to get in there, and you don't know how it happens. And it's not like the rest of the house gets cleaner. It's just more things end up in the garage or end up in the storage or end up in the closet or whatever. And that's, it's like that for me. And so our garage is my responsibility, and i got to keep it clean. It's amazing if we don't keep the cars parked in there, how things fill up. And the garage from floor to ceiling, wall to wall, just gets a ton of stuff. It's crazy. The inside of the house doesn't get any more clean or less clean. It's just the garage. Like things just spontaneously generate out of nowhere. And it's crazy how that happens. Right now, we have a clean garage, first time in a few years. I'm ashamed to say, but both of our cars fit and anything else kind of fits along the wall. It's been incredible just these last couple months that it's been like that. But it's amazing what happens when there's empty space. You can remove all the stuff, but if you don't replace it with something, like for me, my car, then it fills back up again with junk. 
It's just, it just happens that way. Like it's an empty space. It's a void. It wants to be filled, and something's going to fill it. And so it's either going to be my car, or it's going to be who knows what. Stuff I find at garage sales on the side of the road. I'm, man, we, this looks great. we got to get this. Man, we got room in the garage. Let's, let's you know. So i got to have something. i got to put the car in there, take up the space so other stuff doesn't get there. Does anybody have any idea what I'm talking about? There's been a lot of heads nodding and, and all that. Yeah, that's just how it is. We're going to be looking today at this first step in starting a habit that we may need to stop a habit first, but to stop a habit, you got to replace it with something else. Because otherwise, it's just like that garage. Stopping a habit is kind of like cleaning it out. It leaves a void. And that void wants to be filled. And unless something good goes in it, for me, it's my car, jumps can go right back there. Like it's clean for a while, but jumps can go right back where, where the empty space was because it's a void. And so we're going to look at the idea of we can stop a habit, but we really want to fill it with something good. And so we're going to be seeing and what that means. And so part of that's in the book. You can follow and you can read that um, later. You can follow along on the screen. We're going to be reading through some scripture and you can follow on your phone as well. And we're going to be looking in Luke chapter 11. And Luke is one of the Gospels, one of the four Gospels, writings about the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Luke um, was, uh, he also wrote the book of Acts. And so Luke and Acts go together. And Luke um, tells a story from a little different perspective than the others. He um, focuses a lot on the poor. He focuses a lot on women. He focuses a lot on some different perspectives. And you see Matthew, Mark, and John. In Luke 11, we are um, looking at Jesus, and he's teaching about this idea that you can remove something that's bad, but unless you replace it with something good, bad wants to come right back and fill it up. It's not enough to just get rid of the bad. you got to fill it with good. And so we're going to read in Luke 11, and as we read through it, I'll be explaining some things. And so, um, but before we get to that, uh, to stop or empty one thing, you have to start or fill another. That's the main idea tonight. And so let's read in Luke chapter 11, starting in verse 24. It says, When the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it passes through waterless places seeking rest. Jesus, um, before this time, he had been, like he would travel, he'd be teaching, he was um, healing people, he was casting out demons, he was doing miracles, all these kinds of things. Everybody's super excited. Jesus is awesome. We want to follow him. He had been changed in lives. But all these people that he helps, he might heal them from a disease. He might, you know, cast out this demon. He might um, do this miracle for them. Unless their heart changes, unless they become a new person, they're just setting themselves up to go right back to where they were. So Jesus had been traveling. He had been performing miracles. He had been casting out demons. And now he's teaching about it and saying, look, I'm doing all this great stuff, but it's not enough. We're going to see why. So, he says, you know, this unclean spirit goes out. He's wandering around. We see that when bad leaves, it's not satisfied. And what I'm going to do today, I mean, Jesus had cast out demons, like actual demons, like people were possessed by them. They were hurt by them. It was a rough thing. Um, what we're going to look at is a lesson we can pull from that. And we're going to compare demons, like actual literal demons, to bad habits, to bad things, to sin in our life. And this idea that we want to cast out this sin, we want to get rid of this sin, we want to get rid of this bad habit, and because for a lot of us, maybe the habit that we can start is one that we can use to replace a bad habit. But it's not enough to just replace the bad. So when bad leaves, it's not satisfied. So if you stop a bad habit, it's not satisfied. So think of a, a time you try to stop something, and you're good for a week or two, and then just that habit comes back. You're like, oh, I've tried to stop like 50 times already. You know, it's not satisfied when it leaves. And you're on edge a little bit. And we see that the bad, it wants to come back. In verse 24, it continues and says, And finding none, finding no place to be, it says, I will return to my house from which I came. And so that's the spirit. He goes out. He's kind of wandering around. He's like, I want to go back. Yeah, Jesus cast me out of this guy, and he's doing great. I kind of miss being there, you know. And so the guy is doing fine. He, he's been made well, and he has the bad taken out of him, but he hasn't really done anything. And so the, the bad wants to come back. In verse 25, it says, When it comes... It finds the house swept and put in order. It's talking about the guy that Jesus had cast a demon out of. He's like, the guy's doing great. You know, he's got he's of sound mind. Everybody in the community likes him now. Like, he's a lot easier to get around. 
and get along with. Um, the spirit comes back. He's like, this guy looks great. It says, then it goes and brings seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they enter and dwell there. And so uh, this idea, this lesson, is that bad returns if the void it left isn't filled by something else. And this is the idea of my garage. So if I clean the garage out, there's this emptiness, there's this void, everything looks great, but there's nothing good in its place. It's just empty. And empty, especially in a garage, really wants to be filled. Closets, they really want to be filled. There's empty space there. You're like, oh yeah, I've been looking for a place to put that. I got, I got a little, you know, a square foot in my closet. Oh, and I got, you know, I can stack it. I can stack it. Like there's, there's empty room in there. When, when it's empty, there's this void. It's like an ion, like an atom that loses, you know, one of its, uh, I don't know why it's, you know, the neutron, proton, all that. The electron's gone. Electricity, if you don't know how electricity works, there's a wire, and the electrons are all, like, going through it because um, they're on edge. It's like that. It's like electricity that the bad wants to come back. In the garage, it's empty. Um, the stuff wants to come back. And for the person that Jesus had cast a demon out of, and they're doing all great, if that person doesn't have something in its place, it's empty, the house is, is well kept, and that, that demon, he finds seven of his friends, and then he come back, and they, they take over. They take over because the guy hasn't done anything in its place. The bad comes back. The bad returns. The bad habit returns. You know, just the bad things we're doing, the, the garage, it's, it's clean, but the bad stuff comes back. It's just crazy how that works. And we see then in verse 26, and the last state of that person is worse than the first. So we learned that when bad returns, it's worse than the first time. So Jesus could heal this guy and do all this great stuff, and the guy's doing great. But unless something else happens on top of that, he's going to end up worse off than he was because the bad's going to come back with a vengeance. It's kind of like if you have a bad habit and you stop the bad habit for a while, a few weeks later, when you start it up again, you kind of fall back into it. It's worse than it was. And like it comes back with a vengeance. And the bad stuff in our life, it does that. What is the solution? How can we um, not have this happen? Because one of the things that we might want to do during this series, we might want to stop a habit, but the truth is, it's not enough to just stop a habit. And I mean, if you look in the book, I go through some different things, but basically, this bad habit that we have, it's got some kind of need in our life that it's filling, some kind of felt need, some kind, something that makes it such an important thing in our life. If we don't figure out what that need is that it's meeting and replace it with something good, then it's just going to come back because there's that void in our life. There's that need in our life. Um, but if we replace it with something good, like in, in the teaching that he's, you know, he's talking about, that spirit comes back, but there's a fortress around the house now because you know Jesus is in the house and Jesus is protecting the house, then the bad's not going to come back in because Jesus keeps the bad out. It's not enough to just get rid of the bad. It's not to say, yeah, Dave, you know, I'm doing all these things. I don't really want to do those anymore. Um, okay, yeah, do these three things, and you won't do that bad anymore. We gotta replace it with something good. We gotta replace it with something that will hold us steady, will hold us secure, will keep the bad habit away, will keep the bad um, from coming back into our life. And so these people that Jesus had healed, that they would trust in Jesus, that they would follow Jesus, and their lives would be changed, they would be made new, and the bad wouldn't come back in because now Jesus is in the house, and Jesus is guarding it, and Jesus is keeping it safe. And so, it's not enough to just get rid of the bad. Uh, so, the, the main idea for this week is don't just stop the bad, replace it with good. Don't just stop the bad, replace it with good. Romans 12, 21 says, Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Now, uh, the kids got superheroes, and that's their main idea, that's their main... Um, that's, that's the verse that they're looking at today every week. We have the kids. They go through the exact same teaching we're doing, like the main idea. They just do it a little differently. They're looking at Romans 12, 21. Using superheroes, right? Overcoming evil with good. Superman, Spider-Man. Like, they're the good, and they're overcoming the evil, like in, in the cartoon. But Jesus is good, and Jesus can overcome um, the bad that's in our life. So it's not just enough to say, I don't want to do these few bad things, but we really need to fill it with something good. We need Jesus in our life to be that good that can fill and take the place of the bad. 
one thing when we're going through the habit series this week, it, look through, you know, just some, just kind of think, are there any habits um, that you have? You're like, man, Dave, I really wish there's this one thing I wouldn't do. Like, it gets on my nerves or it gets, you know, like on my spouse's nerves, or my kids' nerves, or my friend's nerves or whatever. I really wish I would stop that. Or, you know, maybe something else. But think, is there a habit that maybe um, you could stop? But don't just go stop there, but think, what is something good that could be put in its place? And think, how can we use this good habit to replace the bad habit? And so be praying this week. Be saying, God, you know, maybe there's something in my life as, as we start this Habit Power series that I just I need to stop doing this. But God, help me find something good to put in its place, something that honors God, something that's constructive for, for your family, something that helps you at work, something that draws you closer to God. Think of something good that you can put in its place. We don't want to just um, stop the bad, but we, we, we want to replace it with good. Um, Jesus has to be in us, or all we're doing is just tidying up the garage, tidying up the closet, and leaving it clean to just invite all the junk back in. But when Jesus comes in our life, He fills it, and He makes us secure and, and uh, strong against all that from coming back. And we have Jesus in our life by repenting, by saying, God, I'm sorry, forgive me. Um, please save me. And He will save us, He will be our light, and He will fill us with good. Um, this week, uh, as you go through the Habit Power chapter, I mean, it goes through some different tips to how to find maybe a bad habit to stop and then how to look at a good habit that you can use to replace it. Um, be looking through that and see, because I mean, I'm sure all of us, and the crazy thing is the older that we get, the more habits that we develop. It's just routine, and if we leave routine unchecked, it turns into habits. Um, but think there's a habit to stop to replace it with good. Let me uh, pray for us and we'll be finished. God, we thank you for today. We thank you that um, you've provided us a way to, to not just stop the bad, but to fill it with good. That, that Jesus, you are good. You're, you're completely, purely good. And we pray that you would fill us with your goodness and that you would save us, that you would forgive us, that you would be our rock, be our protector. And um, as, as we tidy up our closet or tidy up our garage, so that you would, uh, in, in our lives, that you would provide a barrier and protection around us so, so the bad doesn't go right back in to that spot where we left it. And we don't want to just get rid of the bad for a day or two. We want to permanently expel it. And thank you that, that you're strong enough that, that when we're weak, you're strong. We pray you'll help us. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, as you're you know, looking through the book, let me know if you have any questions about these things. Um, I hope it's a really helpful thing. It's been really helpful for me as I've been writing it. I've been kind of starting some new habits as well as we've been doing this. And so um, that's been good.